Hi, I'm Bud Navarro, and I'm lucky enough to be here at the Birchfield Penny uh, Museum with tonight's featured artist, uh, Diane Bush, who I've been lucky enough to know for quite a while, but I haven't seen for a low these 20 odd years. And uh, Diane, when I first met you, you were doing a outstanding, virtuosic black and white photography of working class women in England. This, of course, is yeah, anybody can tell, I hope, is a very, very colorful, very uh, avant striking kind of electrical show. So, why the transition from the old black and white work to this? Well, it's still documentary work, and I never really wanted to leave my documentary roots. What happened was when the Gulf War started, I was jolted into action, and uh, I was so upset by the war that I uh, basically decided to document every day of the war as if I were on the front, but of course I wasn't. And the war lasted 43 days, so I kneeled in front of my TV set for 43 days and shot many, many pictures off uh, the TV screen. And then when the Iraqi war uh, came into play, I decided to uh, rework these old pictures very much like a painter might rework a an old canvas mm -hmm. and uh, threw bleach on the pictures, which uh, produces these uh, sort of explosions. Right. They are pretty extraordinary. And uh, I see that they're also quite distorted. And you can sort of see the pixels inside the pictures. Right. So these are quite up close, kind of distorted images taken from a mm -hmm. television screen and then printed and distressed with bleach. Right? Right. Is that what you yeah. said? Yeah, I'm using a macro lens uh, very close to the screen. And it's an old fashioned curved TV screen, which gives you the uh, distortion. And uh, shooting with a wide aperture so that you only get a small point in the picture frame where the TV pixels are sharp. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Well, I also noticed that, you know, unlike a lot of political work, overtly political work that can sometimes be very tough to handle, get overly serious, kind of sledgehammerish and didactic, this is actually wacky. And in addition to being politically strong and obviously has a point of view of how explosive, literally explosive, the whole experience of war is emotionally and visually. It also has a kind of pop wackiness to it, which I think is great. I think that makes it a lot more exciting to look at and hang out with. So, uh, is that yeah, everybody is tired of looking at uh, you know straightforward documentary pictures, those that we're allowed to see. And of course, we're not allowed to see very many. We're not allowed to see you know the coffins. Um, so, because we can't see our soldiers uh, undergoing physical stress, I decided to show the physical stress of people whom we invite into our living rooms every day and are almost members of our family, these, these news anchors and such, and they're very safe in their TV studios and all of a sudden you've got this um, explosive element kind of layered on top of their, their safe existence. Right. That's it's basically, you know, trying to say something about censorship in the media and also, you know, how cocooned we are here in, in, in America. See, it's funny to me too that actually I think we're so used to seeing images of carnage on television that we don't even notice it. It doesn't hit us emotionally. And the thing I love about this is the way it's been distorted and dramatically represented so that you have to look at it again. You can't just stroll past it as you'd stroll past a television, a bank of television sets in a in an electronic store, you know, which we've all been surrounded by, constantly bombarded with television images. So this is actually a pretty electrical transformation of a television image, huh? Right, yeah, normally you don't see uh, studios <laughs> blowing up. Or studios the, blowing up. Yeah, yeah, so. Now the rest of the show is hilarious. Um, can we catch the rest of the show? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, and get the mic up. Okay. Rowing. Okay, so in line with the notion that in addition to the overtly political content that some of the show has, here we have a much more radically pop content. And, uh, and I think, you know, we were calling this uh, agit pop art as opposed to agit prop art. So it has this kind of absurdity to it that we're also surrounded by all the time in, in a sort of um, we're all in this together kind of mode, right? So I don't know if you can catch this, but these, are, these have a special quality to them. Blah, 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 blah,
Do you have anything to add to that? Blah. Okay. <laughs> do another blah. Wait, get her, get her on camera. Do it, say it again. Uh, do you have anything to add to that? Blah. Okay. Diane, could you tell us a little bit about how you got involved in all this, uh, it, basically what you've been doing, and uh, a little bit about your life? Well, I'm a Buffalonian. Actually, I'm a Ken Moron, and uh, in 68, I uh, emigrated to the UK with a draft dodger to escape the Nixon administration and that kind of um, formed a lot of my life. I, I specialized in black and white documentary photography while I was in England and I came back in 79 to um, be with ailing parents and ended up getting my master's degree in photography at uh, University of uh, New York at Buffalo. Um, then I ended up doing some working as a staff photographer for both Channel 17 and Channel 7. I uh, ran a photo department at uh, Villa Maria College for six years, which I enjoyed immensely. And in 1997, uh, relocated to Las Vegas to get some sunshine. And I've been there ever since. I work there as a uh, cultural supervisor for Clark County and I'm still doing my photography the whole while. So that's it in a big nutshell. Thank you, Diane.
graduation a bunch of years ago, and I figured, uh, you know, it's like, it's like a wedding dress, where the day they give it to you, and then you know, you know, you wrap it up. Is Patrick Keys, and how do you feel about the work? I enjoy it. It's, I think that it's, it's good that people can can use art to express what they want to say about things. And this piece in particular that I was just I love because it, it offers a statement on what's going on, and in a way that you can understand without making it look.